I've been hooking. I know you're probably looking at me, why am I all geared up? Well, some of you were asking me about what I take when I go whipping or plugging. So I figure, picture says a thousand words, so I figure I put everything on for you guys, so you guys get an idea at least um, what it looks like. But, and don't worry, I'll, later on I'll share with you what's in my bag. I'll just work with what's outside for now. So um, we notice that the things that I do is that I make sure I have my gloves. And you know the gloves are very important because of the fact that sometimes whether it's raining or you got splashed on from the water or maybe you might have sunscreen in your hand and when the fish hits sometimes the fish is so hard that you might actually lose grip and you might actually lose your pole or when you're casting your pole it might slip out of your fingers and then all of a sudden your pole hits the ground and shatters it into pieces so you know it happens to me a lot of times too so you know, I learned to wear the gloves and I think I remember the last time I went fishing, um, I lost my step and luckily I was able to grab onto the rock while I held onto my pole with my left hand and I was kind of, I kind of swinged in like a half moon while my legs were dangling and I was holding onto one, I was holding onto the rock. So um, luckily I had the gloves, if not, that would have probably cut to my fingers and I don't know if I would have lost my grip. And got seriously hurt, so you know now I make sure that I always get my gloves and I keep an extra spare in my bag just in case. So you know that's very important. Uh, next thing I do is I make sure I have this um, finger casting gloves, yeah, because you know you start plugging for more than eight hours a day, um, you know it, it will hurt eventually. Um, you know the, when the salt water softens up the skin and you know the braid, the braid is like a Man, that, that braid just cuts to your fingers, you know. And after a while, it starts to get sore, and, and you know, it, it just just makes it hard to cast. So this actually protects your finger from getting sore, so you can keep casting longer. And um, if you have to handline the 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 line up, it won't cut into your fingers. You can wrap it around your your hands, and you can pull up the fish, or just pull it up without worrying about it slipping or really um, cutting into your skin. So. They're very important to have. Um, next thing that I always carry is my flotation device. You know, it's a CO2 activator. I pull it and a, uh, a flotation um, um, bag starts to open up just in case I fall into the water. It's portable, it's out of the way, and you know, it's easy to use and it's there all the time. Especially if you're going in an area that's rough or there's big swells, yeah? Which sometimes we do go. So if we're gonna go take that chance, we're gonna make sure we have take all the safety precautions that we can. I mean, usually I will. I would wear a bright, bright color shirt, but this is just demonstration purposes, and I was just gonna show you the gear. So you know, that's the reason why I'm not wearing a high visibility shirt. But most of the time, I'll be wearing a high vis visibility shirt. Um, also, you know, of course, I have my backpack, and I like this backpack because it has the waist clip, and if you can see that, um, I do have a gaff in the back. Um, and once in a while, I'll even put a sliding gaff inside, yeah? If I need a sliding gaff, I'll put the sliding gaff in. And I, I choose this bag, but this is kind of a diver's bag. And the reason why I picked it is because, um, if you see, um, it's kind of waterproof a little. There's like a waterproof sheeting on the sides and the front, but a lot of times when it rains or when the big waves hits us, you know, I don't want my gear to get all wet all the time. So this allows it to um, protect my gear and it does have little holes in the bottom so if the water do get in, you know, it'll run out and you know, the air can go in and it will circulate the air so the, you know, your gear will get stink and you know, moldy smelly and all that kind of stuff, right? We don't want that. Um, but that's the reason why um, I picked this bag. So you can see, and then later on I'll share more about this bag, but if you see, I take it off. I got this bag here, and again, it's a really good bag. And if you notice, I have my fish bag as well attached to my backpack. So if I gotta haul my fish out, I have it right here at all times, yeah? And let me just reach over here. And I do have my slide gaff, which I can throw in, inside the bag if I ever need a slide gaff. Now, another thing that um, I do have that's built on, that you can see, it's mace. And now you guys are wondering why I'm carrying mace. Well, for one thing, um, the reason why I'm carrying mace now is because sometimes when I'm fishing, there, there, there are these dogs that's out there. And sometimes, and a lot of times, sometimes, you know, a lot of the people, they walk their dogs and they don't put them on a leash, which they, of course, you know, in Hawaii, there's a leash law, but they don't a lot of times. 
and their dogs tend to attack people. And I got attacked like about three times already. Um, whether it's a wild dog outside or whether it's somebody else's dog. And, you know, you got to find ways to protect yourself. And, you know, a lot of it is for a dog, but, you know, of course, it's also for men, men too, right? Um, just in case there's a lot, you know, nowadays, you, get, you know, you're fishing by yourself. There's a lot of crazies out there too. So you got to kind of protect yourself as well, especially if you're out there by yourself. You don't know what's coming. You know, so it's just a little safety thing that you might want to think, take a look at and think about. But trust me, I've been doing this for a long time and, uh, you know, a lot of close calls. So now I kind of carry something to protect myself a little out there. Now that you have to, yeah. And if you noticed on here, knee pads, like I've been telling you guys, got really knee pads. But you don't want to be caught in the, in the boonies. You don't want to be caught miles and miles away from home. And it takes one mistake. I don't care how good you are. You make one mistake and you land on your knees. And you break your knee, you ain't coming back home. Or you ain't going to go to, you, can't, you won't be able to walk to your vehicle. So, you know, you don't want to take that chance. If you have a friend, not too bad, but if you're going by yourself, these knee pads, I'm telling you, because I got a lot, a lot of close calls. And after that, I learned my lesson. I started wearing knee pads and that saved me a lot of time. So that's something to think about, yeah? Now, the next thing I want to share with you guys is, you guys probably looking at what, what in the world is this on my, on my waist, yeah? Um, it's like a, I, I, it pretty much I carry everything on here. I don't have to wear the backpack. I can actually take the um, fish bag, put it on my back, or I could strap it behind, and I can just go. I don't need the backpack. So I can actually put everything on my waist if I wanted to. Or I could also use this. Yeah. I can just throw this over. And I could strap this behind, lock it in place, and then of course um, I, I could put all my all my lures in here, and I could, put, I could put all my lures on the bottom. I don't need a backpack if I don't want to. And especially if you're fishing in waist deep water, it, this keeps your you know lures or whatever from getting wet, or your cell phone can be right here. And I buy the ones that if you notice, there's a tray. The tray helps because you can put your line here, your lure on top. So you can free your hands while you're doing things and you can just leave it here in the tray. So I like this part. This is very important to have. And inside there's a waterproof bag that you can put your phone in. So if you ever get splashed down, not too bad. Um, also, the reason why I like this is that if you're going knee height water, all my lures and everything else is above. So it doesn't get wet. If I'm walking in knee height water or walking to a pond or the water splashing on my legs. My gear is on my waist, so it protects my gear, yeah? <clears throat> so, what is on this belt? Well, for one thing, if you look, cool, cool, cool thing here is this. I got my clippers for every need, and it's, it attaches right to this container. And keep in mind, this container did not come with the belt. Everything else you see here came with it, except for my add-ons. But this container here was separate. I had to buy it separately, yeah? And the reason why I like this container, keep in mind though, it's not waterproof, okay? It's just so that um, I, can, I can keep some of my lures or my hooks or whatever I want to put in here, I, I can. It's like a container. If you can see, look, it opens up. And this thing is... Um, um, very useful because um, I have little compartments here that I can open up, I can put my GoPro batteries in, I can put hooks, I can put my Big Island baits in here so I don't have to go through the bag and grab hooks or grab my hammer bombs or grab my lures or my Big Island baits. It's on me right here so I don't have to go to my bag where it's up there. I can stay right in the same spot and get everything I need in this container here yeah and it holds a lot it holds a lot let me show you so you get an idea just how big this lure is see watch this is the usury lure and this is a big lure see how much it, it just fits right in there i can put my daiwa sp manos in there and it still fits and i still have room to put more and later on i'll get a closer view of how this looks like and you can see just how much space 
this container really has but it comes in so useful especially if you're out there by yourself or again you know you're not carrying your backpack but you still want to carry your gear you want to go out there a little bit lighter this helps yeah and again i can close it up and not worry about it boom on the right side i have my walkie talkie so i can contact my friend i have a small knife here if i ever need a knife i have one more knife over here and i also have my pliers my long nose pliers here perfect so everything I need. Cool thing is, there's also a big pouch here, as you can see. I could put my lures inside. Not a problem. If I need a big lure, bam, I got it right here. I can do it. I wanna um, put hook containers, I wanna put all my, my grubs. It can fit right inside there. Perfect. I can put my sunscreen in here. I can put a bottle of water inside here. You can put anything in this bag. It's because this is it's pretty big, this pouch, as you can see. Look at that. You put a big container inside here. That's how good this this um waste um um should I say um tool belt like fishing belt is. Now the best thing about the belt that I really really like is this right here. The pole holder. Why? Look. How many times have we been fishing, whether it's waist deep high or knee height, and you wanted to change your line or you wanted to fix your line, but the problem is that where are you going to put your pole? You don't want to put your pole in the water, or you have to lean it on you, or whatever. Oh, with, with this pole holder, all you have to do is this. Free up your hands, and I can do whatever I want. I can fix my line. And change my line and my hands are free I don't have to worry about my reel touching the water the sand or the rocks anything it's here if I have to gaff the fish I put the pole in here I grab the gaff and then I can just gaff the fish and not worry about the rod if I want to um, dunk or float and you know you have no spike you, you throw the pole out Put it in here and you can just wait and watch and stand sit up and just wait. When the pole strikes, you can just reel the pole and then and the fish in. Just by using this. Or I could put a small gaff in here while I fish. So when I when the fish comes, I can just grab the gaff out, bam, put it back in here. So this comes in handy a lot. And, and you know this thing is I mean, uh, how many times where I needed to free up my hands and the last time I tried to gap the fish was so simple that I just put the pole in here and I could just gap and not worry about having to, you know, hold my pole in one hand and, you know, so, but, you know, it, it just comes in handy. And that's why when I seen this, I knew this is what I needed for when I was to plug or, or whip. So this belt is fantastic. It's not that expensive too. So it's... So anybody can buy it. Again, keep in mind, this belt does not come with this, yeah? This is separate, this, this container here. And again, the reason why I keep this container is I want to put all my lures in. I want to put different Shimano um, lures in here. I want to put different SP Mino Daiwas in here. I want to put Mark White lures in here. I can put Big Island baits in here. I can put my hooks in here. Everything can go in here. And when I'm fishing, I can just switch up the, the lures. I don't have to run to my bag. I can put my I can put the my, my um my hooks in here, I can put my swivels in here, I can put my line in here, but keep in mind I keep I buy these um um the thinner ones. I don't buy the you know the one in a spool because they're bulky and you know it takes up too much space, but you buy the thinner ones, they'll fit perfectly in the pouch. So then this way you can carry a lot of your line with you and you know your swivels. Anything you big got in Beijing, put it all in here. So you don't need a backpack. I can just go out like this if I wanted to. So this belt, one of the best thing I invested in. I've been testing out for a long time and so far it's been handling. I mean, I took, I abused this a lot. So, and the only thing I noticed that, you know, that slowly is coming apart is some of the stitches. But again, keep in mind, I abused it a lot, lot, lot. So it's easy to just sew it up. 
And that's what I did. I just sew it back up and it's good to go. And so far, it's been handling. Even the plastic container, I thought this thing would just break off, but it's still going. You know what I mean? So as cheap as it is, quality, not too bad. But you know, like anything else, you still got to take care of it, you know. But it's still handling. So I'm, I'm happy with it. You know, I have everything that I need. And of course, I'll do a close-up after this. So you guys get to see a little more of um, how it works and what I have in my bag and what I actually put in these containers and so on. So keep watching and then let's get a close up of what I carry in my bags and what I put in on my, my belts and all that. Okay, so let's see um, some of the gear that I carry in my bag as well as on my belt. Let's start with the belt first. Um, what I do is I carry like, see, uh, quite a few lures because this thing can hold a lot of lures, yeah? Um, I'll carry, my, of course, my SP minnows, which I love. I'll carry maybe two or three of them I'll put in here that I want to try out. Because sometimes certain colors work better than the others, yeah? Then I'll put a smaller SP minnow, just in case. If they want a bite-sized one or something smaller, I'll put that in there. And then um, my mag darter. I want a mag darter in there. But the mag darter swims a little different from the SP minnows, so I'm kind of testing those doors out. And I got the tinier Daiwa SP Minnow, so I put that in here, just in case. Because I don't know what's out there, big, medium, or small fish, right? Then I got my smaller Mag Darter, the Yuzuri, uh, the Bone, I eat that. Then of course I get my Mark White, I got this Mark White that I try to use. Then I got the one ounce, the little bigger Mark White. Then I put the one that's a little bit smaller. And then I got the half ounce. Mark Whites and that I put it right here. So you can see I have quite a few. I mean I can I can load it up if I want to. I can put the Big Island baits inside, which I do have. Um, I stuff the Big Island baits in the bag here. So if I ever need Big Island baits, I can just grab it. And I I store like three, four different kind of um Big Island baits in my in my bag. So if I ever need, I can just grab it. So it's right on me at all times. Yeah. So I put them inside here. And of course, I got my split ring pliers, but I gotta change my bigger lures out. So you can see why I keep this. And of course, over here, if you look, I have my, my GoPro batteries, so it's right there if I ever need it. And I got all my hooks over here. And then I can also put more Big Island baits in here. And I can use this as a tray as well, if I wanna use it as a table, I could. So, so this thing holds a lot. So that's pretty much what I put inside here. And you can put anything else you want inside here as much as you want, yeah? This comes in handy. Now for my bag, um, again, you can see that I have my fish bag attached to it already. So I like this bag, there's a lot of um, compartments. And you can notice that it's got this waterproof outing shell over here, as well as on the side, sides a little to protect from the rain and waves. But what I do is that I, also, I try to, I have a small little um, rain jacket. It's light and it's portable, so it doesn't carry too much weight. So if, if it's raining, I carry this, yeah? If not, I don't, I don't bring it. But again, if you need it, it's here. So I, I usually have one on the side in my car, just in case. Um, got my GoPro batteries. So I put that in the bag to make sure that's in there. And then of course, all my Big Island baits, Campagna Lords, all the different flavors. I make sure I have this. This is important, because you just never know, right? Um, what's biting out there. So I carry that in a waterproof container. And then um, inside here, I got my big lures that they carry for plugging. So if I'm gonna plug, I make sure I put it in a nice container so it's all organized, easy to um, grab and it protects it, right? From the rain and everything else. And then if I need to carry more different lures, I have another container that I carry with me for my medium sized pole in here. And if um, I don't want to carry the big one, I can use a smaller container. So I'll put the um, um, some of those lures inside here and then I'll carry it in here just to save some weight. So, you know, you can change it around whichever way you guys want to. And then I also carry another knife, just in case, put that knives. Um, gotta get the polarized shades. Gotta get the polarized shades. So I have that inside my bag that I put over here. And of course, make sure you have your wipes. 
you got to get the wipes, right? Then I got all my lines. And again, I don't use the spools. I use auto ones that are kind of thin, so it doesn't take too much space and I can put it all together like this. So I got my 50, my 80, my 30, and my 20. So I got all that set up, ready to go. Put that in my bag. Then I carry uh, two files. You know, I carry this one. I, this small one is for the smaller lures. I usually put it in the black container. Just like that. And then I usually have a, uh, I, I usually have a bigger, bigger file that I kind of put inside my bag too. So for, you know, my bigger hooks. And then of course I carry my scale. Just in case I want to weigh the fish. And I also have my measuring tape. I want to measure it to make sure it's legal size, right? So, you know, it's always good to have one just because you don't want to catch anything illegal. So this will kind of help out. So I got that in there. And then the hammer bombs, I do different colors. Like the yellow, I know it's all one ounce. The whites will be one and a half ounce. And if I get the black, that's two ounces. So this way, it's just easier for me to figure out what ounce it is and what weight it is by just looking at them. So that's how I do it. Um, then of course I got all my swivels here. Got your swivels. Got that in here. And of course snacks. Get snacks, something that won't spoil, right? And make sure you have your water, something to drink. Keep that in here. Then I got extra hooks on the side for when I'm using the um, Big Island baits and all that. So you wanna get extra hooks. Then of course, don't forget first aid. You need first aid kit. So I always carry my first aid kit. And of course, sunscreen. You gotta get sunscreen because that sun out there is, is just crazy. And if I wanna carry bigger lures, I can. You know, I can put it inside my bag or in my, my waist pack. And of course, this is on me. And one, one more thing I carry is, um, uh, Hawaiian South. For those of you guys who know that live here all your life or have been fishing almost 40 years like I have, um, you learn to carry Hawaiian South because there's a lot of spirits out there, you know, um, and a lot of old timers know what I'm talking about. But for you new um, beginners or people on the mainland that's coming to Hawaii to fish, um, there is a lot of spirits out there. So you gotta be real careful. It can get really spooky, and that's why we carry the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian South to kind of keep them away and you know stop them from causing trouble um you know i can <laughs> i can tell you guys story that will probably crap you guys pants out hey that'll be a good one right fishing story that will crap your pants hey i mean i can actually make a video like that no but uh, maybe later on i'll share with you one story that happened recently uh, maybe in my next video or something just so that you guys can see what you guys are dealing with out there and that what a lot of the old timers uh, we faced out there so um might be something interesting you might want to listen to so but always carry the hawaiian salt yeah for protection when we're out there so yeah so pretty much you know this is what i carry and again you can change it up the way like i have a smaller bag too you know this is when i go you know a little bit longer farther but i also have a smaller bag that if i'm gonna go you know not that far or i want to go lightweight now I do have a smaller bag to, to, to put all my gear in there as well. Well, I'll just again go with the waist pack and I'll go with just a chest pack. So you can change it around uh, any way you want. But this is just basically kind of what I carry most of the time um, with me when I'm going out there. And again, once in a while, I'll even carry a slide gap if I'm on a cliff or something like that. So, and I can change it around. So I just, you know, um, it, but it's good to have a bag that has a lot of pouches and a lot of things to tie on. That's why, I, you know, I kind of pick this bag so um i hope this helps uh, i know a lot of you have been asking what i carry and you know and, and this is a lot sometimes you know um that we carry but again when you're walking three to five miles ten miles um you know you don't want to forget anything because you just can't go back <laughs> you know what i mean so you gotta make sure you guys carry whatever you can in your bag and um this way when you're out there you have everything because you just don't know what's gonna bite out there you don't know what's out there. So you want to kind of be prepared just in case, yeah? So um, I hope this helps. I hope you guys like um, everything that I've shown so far. And I appreciate you guys watching my videos. And if you guys can, please subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. And don't forget, always keep on island hooking. You guys take care of yourself now. Take care.